welcome to You Can Draw a Comic Book, Part 2. Now I've received thousands of requests, um, well, hundreds of requests. Uh, well, I got one request to do Part 2, so I'm going to go ahead and do it. Here goes. Now, if you haven't seen Part 1, I'm going to put a link uh, right up here someplace uh, to that. Uh, and I, like I say, if you haven't seen part one, it would be a good idea to watch part one and then come back and watch part two. Now I think uh, nowadays most people have a printer that has a scanner on top. I think most of them come that way. Uh, you are going to need a printer and a scanner for this. However, if you don't have that, you can go to your local library. Uh, you can go to Kinko's. Come to think of it, is Kinko's still in business? I don't know. But anyway, a copy shop. So uh, let me show you what you need to do. Uh, it's fairly simple and let's get started. Okay, so here's a page of original artwork. A uh, 9 by 12 sheet of paper. So what we need to do is we need to put that in the scanner um, and scan it. So let's do that. So here's the artwork scanned in and now we want to print it so let's go to print and the key here is to scale this to 75 percent we want that to be 75 percent and then we're going to go ahead and print that so here you can see we have the full size copy the original artwork and we have the reduced copy. Now the next thing we want to do with the reduced copy is cut it out. Now that we have our reduced copy cut out we're going to prepare our mock-up comic book. So here's our eight and a half by eleven sheets folded in half and what I've done here is you want to mark cover and page numbers. Now I've done this, you really want to do this in very light pencil. I, I did it in black ink so you could see it. But you're going to number each of the pages in this book. The inside cover is always good to put in your contact information when you're dealing in small press comics. Um, that's your email address, any information that you want people to know. If you have a web page, you want to put that in there. A little bit about yourself is a good idea. Uh, any info that you'd like people to know, put it on the inside cover. I can't tell you how many books I've received with no information in there. Didn't know who did it other than maybe their signature at the end. Uh, very important to do this. Now, as I say, number each one of the pages. In this case, this is page one. You've got page two, page three here, page four, page five, and back here can either be page six or it can be your back cover if you want to do a back cover. So let's, for this purpose, let's say this is going to be page one. The other thing you want to do is number your pages inside the artwork. This one actually says page 15, but for our purpose it's going to be page 1. So next, get your favorite glue stick, whatever kind of glue stick you like, and put some glue on the page, just like this. Glue it up pretty good. And stick your reduced artwork onto the page. Like that. Try and leave a little border at the top and the bottom and each side. Okay, so there we have one page done of the mock-up. Okay, so let's say you have all the pages you want done in the mock-up. You take each individual page like this and it has a mock-up on both sides. And what you're going to do 
is put that into the scanner, scan it, and print it. When that page comes out of your printer, you're going to want to put the scan the other page, the back, put this as a blank sheet of paper into your printer and print, print it on the back. It takes a little practice to get the orientation right. You may have to give it a couple tries. But what you wind up with is like this. Here's one I've printed. This is the mock-up. Here's one I've actually printed. And what you wind up with is each page where it should be. Now that takes a little time. Um, it takes a little practice, especially to orient your page so it does come out. Uh, sometimes the other side will come out upside down and you'll be all aggravated, but uh, normally it you know, a couple tries you'll get it right. Then it's a matter of putting the pages together and stapling your comic book. Now if you invest in a long stapler like this, it'll make stapling your comics a whole lot easier. But this is not real cheap. Depends on if you're going to really invest in making some comics or not. Otherwise, you may be able to use a uh, standard stapler like this red one and do it something like this. I'm not sure how well that works, but uh, you could do it that way. If they, if they take my, my stapler, then I'll, I'll, I'll have to I'll set the building on fire. I did want to show you how many original pages it did take to uh, make the comic book that I was using as an example. It's, if you're going to do something fairly long with an involved story, be prepared to do a lot of work. As you can see, it's uh, pretty time consuming. Uh, some people are faster than others, I know that, but um, it does take quite a bit of work to do a... Uh, this one is 16 pages long, so uh, it's a fairly long comic book. Alright, on to how to distribute your comic. So let's talk about how do we distribute this fantastic comic book we made. Well, there's a number of ways. Here's one. This is a publication called Copy This. It's produced by Blake Wirtz, uh, pretty much on a monthly basis. And what this has, it has interviews with uh, current... I dropped it. Now each issue features a interview with a small press creator and in the back um, there is generally new comics that have just come out and a few words about them and it's a good way to contact uh, small press creators um, I'm going to give you all the info in the description down below on how to contact Blake so I would suggest uh, contacting Blake send him Maybe a dollar. <laughs> he can't hold on to So what I would do is to uh, mail Blake a little note, maybe enclose a dollar uh, to uh, cover his postage and things like that. Uh, tell him that you're, in, you're a new creator uh, and you're trying to make some contacts with small press artists. His current issue does not have, uh, it's only an interview issue. That's the very uh, latest one. So make sure he understands that you want to make some contacts with uh, small press creators. Uh, he will get right back to you. He will send you something. He'll probably uh, uh, be all excited that you're interested in making comics. So that's one way to do it. Here's another one. Another good source is the Small Press Alternative Comics Expo. Go to their webpage. Right there and if you go under exhibitors right here it will give you a list of the exhibitors and every one of them that's in pink will have a web page so you can go and, and uh, get all the information from that web page how to contact the artist uh, 
things like that. You can probably see some of their work. And uh, we'll give you a good idea of uh, who to contact. Um, send them an email. Tell them that you'd like to uh, trade with them. And 99% of them will trade with you, unless they have a book that's huge and costs a lot of money to produce. But uh, for the most part, they will trade with you. Here's Matt Fazell, and I mentioned to you in, in an earlier video that if you can draw stick men, you can do small press comics. And you can see Matt does only stick men and is one of the top small press cartoonists in the country. All of the small press creators that I've ever met or corresponded with have been the nicest people in the world. Uh, they love what they do. They love what you're going to be doing. So I think it's a win-win. It's a lot of fun. I don't think you're going to be a millionaire, but you can have some fun doing this if you enjoy drawing um, and if you enjoy telling a story. Most small press comics are not superhero. A lot of them are about the creator's life. So they're really different. Um, they're limited edition art, actually. So I hope you enjoy uh, getting into it, and I hope you enjoyed this little two-part series. I hope it helps you, and I'll see you in my next video, which probably has nothing to do with comics. I'm curious, but...